guys, check this out. I've managed to get all of the mechanics for my koi pond under this single paving slab. Yep, and I'm gonna talk you through the lot. So I'm just gonna lift it off. Yeah, so there it is, guys. <laughs> um, you know, what is that? 700 by 500, something like that. And in there, I've got a UV with a nice spider on it, a titanium heater. I've got an Evolution Aqua very pump control system. The pump itself is in the pond. Uh, and I've got a Pontec uh, air stone or air compressor right there for the air stone that's uh, down the other end. I've also got two two inch returns coming from the plant filtration bay uh, going underneath this lintel here. And I've got a manifold uh, which enables me to um, divert water to the central sort of floating pot or as I need to through this system, uh, depending on how I want the flow to go. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, guys, is talk you through it. So if you've seen my other video, then you'll know that I've built my own filter and underneath the camera basically is the, is the brush filter and then the plant bay. Uh, is next to it there's a spillover into the plant bay and then that returns back to the pond by these two two inch returns i've used two inch returns from one inch in the plant bay because it encourages air to mix with the water effectively uh, and it's just a natural way of aerating the water plus if i want to I'm just going to pull this guy out a bit dirty but that's the control panel for the Evolution Aqua Fairy Pump, which I love by the way. If I want to up the pressure on the pump, then I can, uh, and I don't need to worry about the, the returns from the plant bay being overwhelmed because I've doubled up with, uh, with two two inches basically. So that's the, the reason why I did that. But ultimately, where does the water come from? Well, it comes from the Fairy Pump, which is in the pond at the, at the end of the uh, at the very end of the pond, or the other side of the pond, I should say. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, and it comes into this manifold just here. Uh, and I've put a manifold in because I diverted uh, some of the water off to what, effect what effectively is a floating pot. Um, so it comes up through here into this manifold. So <laughs> I've had to bend things around just to just to be able to get the pipe work right. Um, and that means I can control the flow of water from either back to the pond uh, through in this direction or back through in this direction to the to the floating pot, which I quite like. It's a nice feature. Um, and also, if that pipe work uh, to the pot seems to be um, getting a bit clogged up, which you can at times, I can really ramp up the pressure through there and just give it all a bit of a blow through and it works really well. So from the pump to the manifold, however I choose, um, through a very short piece of pipe work, as you can see, Jubilee clipped on into the Signet 3 kilowatt titanium heater. Uh, it's currently set to, what, I don't know, 6 degrees, something like that. That's what I had it set over the winter, but it's doing nothing at the minute because it's about 10 to 15 degrees average ambient temperature right now. So that's cool, but I managed to get that in. Um, I then had to be quite novel in how I um, attached the pipe work because I had to use a very short stretch of pipe work you can probably see there uh, to get it into the Yamitsu 15 watt um, uh, algae master or the 15 watt UV which I'm going to change that lamp in a minute so it runs through the UV you'll all be familiar with that and then through a bit of flexi hose uh, into a manifold into the brush bay into the main filter so uh, and also I store, as you can see, the controller for the for the vary pump in here. And I also store a small compressor to aerate the other side of the pond. I don't really think I need this, but I've got the space, uh, so I use it anyway. Now, ordinarily, what would you expect to see all of this kit? Probably bolted to a wall, um, looking, you know, really quite smart, nice pipe work, I suppose. You're going to need the space for that. You're going to need a little filter house for that, that sort of thing. I didn't want that. I wanted this to be stowed in a small amount of space as possible um, to fit it under a single slab to make this whole area look really, really clean, as I've shown you before, um, and I've achieved it. 
Now, you might think it looks messy. Yeah, it does. It does look messy, um, you know, and it's relatively difficult to, let's say, change the bulb on your UV, although I'm going to do that in a minute to show you how long it actually takes. Um, but this has been running for over two years, right, like this. There's a bit of water in the bottom. That's because it rains. That's not because it's leaking. Um, and everything just, just keeps shrugging it off and it keeps cracking on. So, you know, I'm just demonstrating how if you want to, you can really shrink this down. Um, but, I, uh, but the other thing I would add is it only really works, I think, like this because I've got that homemade, really robust filtration system. That's the backbone of this entire uh, Koi Pond ecosystem, not, not this stuff. It's, it's what I built. Now, I know this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea, right? If you're that sort of avid koi keeper, this is just not going to be for you. I know it looks messy. There's a bit of water spilling over and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't, perhaps it doesn't look as professional as you want it to be. But I'll show you. Once you put it to bed, It looks like that. You get that beautiful, clean look. And for me, there was no substitute. So it's just the way I do it. There's loads of other ways of doing it. It's probably not going to be for you, but I like it and it works. So as always, guys, if you like the video, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, don't bother. Ciao for now.